I'm exploring different kinds of drivetrains I might use on my big vertical axis wind turbine that have been shown on some of the other videos. One possibility I came up with is maybe I could use like a rope and pulley system to drive other equipment. And I was tinkering around a little bit and I came up with a right angle rope drive system that could be a possibility. And I put a little prototype model together. I thought others might be kind of interested in that. So that's what I'm going to show in this video. A right angle rope and pulley drive system isn't anything new. But if you want to transfer any significant amount of power, you got to have good traction between the rope and the pulley. Otherwise, it's just going to slip. Therefore, you usually need a pretty big pulley if you're going to transfer a significant amount of power. Now, I've been doing a little thinking on it, and I came up with my own version that I think would take care of that. And this is a right angle rope drive system that I came up with where I'm getting plenty of traction between the rope and this grooved cylinder like that's like a bunch of pulleys. I got five grooves cut in each of these cylinders and I was thinking maybe I might be able to use something like this for my vertical axis wind turbine. You know say this is the vertical axle off the wind turbine and this will be the horizontal axle that I would use if I want to drive other equipment. Now in order to get multiple strands on there so you get plenty of traction I got these little pulleys set up to feed it back around these cylinders. Got them on each side here on the horizontal and the vertical side. And this thing is just a little model I made. This is actually just paracord. And these are just some store-bought little pulleys you can get at any hardware store. And it seems to be working pretty good. This setup is a one-to-one -one ratio for each revolution that this cylinder makes. This horizontal cylinder will make one revolution too. But it can be changed up to different gear ratios if that's what you want. Here, let me set this down. I'll get a video of me turning it. And I'll give a little demonstration now. So for each revolution I make on this vertical cylinder, the horizontal one gives one turn too. And it just keeps working and working. With these cylinders, they're, they're, each one of them are the same length as they are wide. So on the vertical one, lengthwise, the rope will feed off of it right onto the groove on the width of this one. So there's no need to adjust the direction of the rope. It just feeds straight across and the same feeds back. The part that's a little bit critical is the placement of these little pulleys that feed the rope back onto the cylinders. Be a little closer. They have to have the right angle. The pulley has to be wide enough. They'll feed right back to the same width of these grooves I have cut into this uh, cylinder. So there's no jumping off the grooves and it just works smoothly. Well, this doesn't have any bearings in there, a little squeaky <laughs> wood, but you can see what I mean. And one thing that's really nice about this, why I'm even considering it, because this is just primitive technology and nothing has to be exact. Even these cylinders I made, they were just some cutoffs of a fence post and they're not even completely round. And they're not balanced or anything. So this is something that somebody can made thousands of years ago because it's just it's primitive technology and it just it I like it because it's very simple do-it-yourself stuff that has an effect a good effect now it's not going to be good as like sprockets and uh, gears but it's something that any individual could do if there's any irregularities in the construction of something like this the rope does stretch so it is forgiving if there's a problem that's not going to bind up or anything. 
and I notice like the further spacing you have these uh, little pulleys away from this big cylinder the less critical the placement is because you could twist a little bit and it's not going to jump out of the grooves the further these get away it just takes up a little more rope is all and running five strands is just a number I chose I know just one wrap around here would slip two might slip a little bit maybe if this had a bigger diameter it probably wouldn't it'd probably be pretty stable with uh, enough traction but five is definitely enough to where you get all the traction between the rope and the cylinder that you need five was just one that i chose and if this was a smaller diameter probably might actually need more to cover for that rope to get enough surface area for plenty of traction. What I think would be ideal for a big vertical axis wind generator and you want to make a, a right angle drive would be like this beveled gear system they have on these hand drills. They run nice and smooth. It's not going to wear out quick, quiet. But this isn't something that an individual can make of any size. It'd have to probably be as big as the top of this spool right there. I know some of the wind turbines from hundreds of years ago, they had wooden beveled gears and stuff. That's probably something you could do, but that'd be very involved and very critical to get everything just right, where this rope system is pretty primitive. And that's one of the reasons I was considering it pretty simple to do. So that's what I wanted to show in this video. So I hope if you enjoyed it or anything, give some thumbs up, some comments, and thanks for watching. Squeaky, squeaky. There's my paracord splice. I just got it melted together. Hopefully I'll hang together for a little bit. So that, that would be the direction that my vertical axis wind turbine is turning. So this would be turning clockwise. I have to go the other way too. Oh, that wood squeaks. Here goes my splice again. Kind of like a wooden toy.